chapter 10. I want to talk to us this morning on advancing by the anointing. Advancing by the anointing. Praise the Lord. Advancing by the anointing. And I want to take my text from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Very familiar scripture if you have been around uh, church for a while or if you've been a believer for a while. Um, you would have seen this scripture. Uh, once again, I'm speaking on advancing by the anointing. Acts 10.38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Come and say power. Oh, come on, you're going to help me preach today. Come and say power. Okay, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I want you to please underline two, uh, two words or one word and then another phrase in that text. I want us to underline First word I want us to underline is anointed, anointed, and then you also underline this phrase, uh, went about. So the first word, anointed, and then the phrase, went about. Uh, I want to spend a bit of time to highlight some of those things I've asked you to underline. Uh, first of all, the anointing symbolizes the Holy Spirit or, if you like, the administrative part of the Trinity. Uh, if you've been coming to Bible study on Tuesdays, uh, you would have seen we've been learning about the, the Holy Spirit. And we've uh, highlighted the fact that the three are one, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. But the one responsible for the administration of that power of that trinity is the Holy Spirit. So the anointing there symbolizes the Holy Spirit, the administrative part of the trinity. To live the Christian life in the times we are living in, you're going to need the anointing. You're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be impossible to be a successful Christian. When I say successful Christian, I'm not just talking about having lots of money in your bank account, even though it includes that, praise the Lord. But I'm talking about being able to live out your Christian life in the midst of a perverse generation. You're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. The Christian life is the advancing life. The Christian life is not a stagnant life. It is the advancing life. Glory to God. So those words, those, those words that I've asked you to underline, let's first of all consider the first word, which is the anointing or anointed in that text, Acts 10, 38. I ask you to underline that word. We, we're going to consider that word first. That word in that text in the Greek, it's been translated to our English word anointed in the Acts 10 to 38 is the Greek word creo, C-H-R-I-O, C-H-R-I-O. And that word is, is pronounced, if you want to pronounce that word, it is pronounced K-H-R-E-E-O apostrophe dash O, creo. It has the idea of contact. That word anointed in that text, it has the connotation or the idea of a contact or to smear or to rub oil or to rub with oil. That's what that Greek word there, anointed, means. It means to rub with oil by implication to consecrate to an office or religious service. That's why I said it's almost impossible to live the Christian life without the anointing. If you're going to be the Christ-like that God has called you to be like in this generation, if you're going to do what Jesus did and you're going to do greater works 
than Jesus did, the anointing is non-negotiable. This word was used five times in the Bible. It was in the New Testament. In the New Testament, excuse me. It was used five times in the New Testament. Uh, first, we saw that word in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Uh, prophet Isaiah, he prophesied about this, what we're about to read now. He prophesied what Jesus said in Luke 4, 18. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. There is that word. Because he has anointed me, he has creo me, he has anointed me to preach, he has creo me to preach the good tidings to the poor. To preach the good tidings or to preach the good gospel to the poor. We also see that word again in Acts chapter 4 verse 27. Acts chapter 4 verse 27, that word creo, uh, I said it's used five times in the, in the New Testament. It's also the word that the Bible says that the child for of a truth against thy holy child, uh, Jesus, whom thou hast creo, hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Again, we see that word in Acts chapter 10, verse 38 that we've just read. And then we see that word in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, now he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us. Please help me say that. Help me say that I am anointed. It says he has creo us. He, 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 the one that creo us is God. And then we see that word lastly in Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 9, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, he says, Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee, that's Jesus, with the oil of gladness. With the oil of gladness. In the Greeks, uh, in the Greeks, uh, Thea Lexicon Bible or, or uh, commentary, uh, the word creo means, number one, to anoint. And then it talks about consecration of Jesus to the messianic office and furnishing him with the necessary powers for its administration. Jesus wasn't just sent as the Messiah. God anointed him to be able to get that job done. So as the oil comes upon us this morning, uh, what we are believing God for is the word that has gone before us to advance the anointing to advance is coming upon every one of us. Can you say amen? It's coming upon us to enlarge, to expand, to increase, and make progress in every area of our lives. That Creo word, that Greek word also means the enduring Christian or enduring Christians with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in John chapter 12, verse 21, So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also, I have sent you. So if Jesus was anointed and that enabled him to be able to get the job done, we also need the anointing of God upon our lives to get the job done this year. The anointing oil is not a human doctrine. We see this first also, I mean, the, the whole Old Testament is filled with examples of the anointing oil being used. But in the New Testament, let me show you some, uh, uh, Mark chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, so that I don't want us to do this religiously. We want to do this with understanding because when you do something with understanding, uh, the power of God backs it up. Glory to God. Uh, so in, in Mark chapter 6, Verse 7 to 12. Let's see what the Bible says there. He says, and he called the 12 to himself. This way his disciples. Jesus called his disciples to himself. And began to send them out two by two. And gave them, notice he gave them power over unclean spirit. That's what we can see that Jesus gave the disciples. He gave them power. So Jesus gave his disciples power in verse 7, but verse 8, he commanded them to take nothing for the journey. Notice, they're not taking anything for the journey other than what he gave them. Glory to God, except, he says, uh, 
uh, uh, for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in, in their money belt. Verse 9, but to wear sanders and not to put on uh, two tunics. Verse 10, also he said to them, in whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust of under your feet, and as a testimony against them, as surely I say to you, it will be more tolerate, tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than for that city. Verse 12, now, so they went out and preached that men should repent. They were preaching like we're doing right now. So they went out preaching, verse 13, please, look what happened as after they have preached. And they cast out many devils and what church and anointed with oil, not with Pepsi or, 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 or something else, not with water. They anointed with what church? With oil. But Jesus said to them, don't take anything with you. Where did they get the anointing oil from? That's the question. Where did they go? They couldn't have just uh, go and get something randomly. The Bible says they anointed with oil many that were sick. Glory to God. And those who were sick and healed them. Glory to God. Let, let's also see the book of James. We are talking about the fact that the anointing oil is not a human doctrine. It is something we see also in the New Testament. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Is anyone sick among you? In other words, uh, nobody should be sick among us. But should anybody be sick? Come on, there is a bomb in Gilead. Go glory to God. He says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with what church? With all. In the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will, will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. I want us to also appreciate that the anointing oil is a medium through which the Holy Spirit flows. The anointing oil is a medium, but, but pastor, we cook with the oil, we rub ourselves with the oil. But certain things are the wisdom of God. You just don't know. I, I can't explain how it works. But I can tell you from the book of 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. Let's see how the spirit of God came upon David after he was poured oil on. They poured oil on him. And the spirit of God came upon him. Let's see that now. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel 16 verse 13 please. It says, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And what happened? Look what happened, capital S, and the spirit of the Lord. So the oil is a medium through which the spirit flows. He says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. I declare over you, as the oil comes upon you this morning, there shall be manifestation of the Spirit coming upon you from this day forward. You will never lack the presence of the Holy Ghost. Whoo, hallelujah. From this day forward, in the midst of vicissitudes of life, the presence of the Spirit of God will be present and you'll be conscious of His presence with you. From that day forward, come on, say, this is that day. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Two words I ask you to underline. So that was Creo, the anointed or the anointing, the oil. And then number two, the Greek word translated to our English word went about. In that same Acts chapter 10, 10 verse 38 is the Greek word. I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, but if not, uh, I only have a... Jewish name, I'm not from there. Praise the Lord. Diakomai, uh, uh, I'll spell it for you. Diakomai is D I R D I R C H O M A I. Diakoma. Not glaucoma, praise the Lord. Diakoma. <laughs> it's pronounced, if you want to pronounce it like it's been spelled, it's spelled D E E 
hyphen er apostrophe and then dash k o k h o m dash a h e e diacoma it means to depart it means to go it means about it means abroad so that word in that text in that uh, um, acts 10 38 who this phrase went about in that text it's that greek word and it has all of this meaning it means to go about it means to go abroad it means to go everywhere it means to go over it means to go through and through how glory does that sound like advancement to anybody this morning it means not to be contained in one place or in one circumstance or in one situation he wasn't anointed just to stay in one place. He was anointed to break barriers. He was anointed wherever he had to go, he would get there. The Bible says Jesus needed to go through Samaria. He wasn't supposed to go through Samaria. The law and the, the doctrine in those days forbids him to go through Samaria. But he had to go through Samaria. Why? He has the anointing of God upon him. And that was where he encountered the woman by the well of Samaria. The anointing, when it comes upon a man, they start to go everywhere. They start to do things that are unimaginable. They start to break barriers. They, they start to step out of the box, out of limitations. They start to go everywhere. Glory to God. Why? Because the anointing enables an individual to go everywhere. To go over. To go through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To go throughout or throughout to pass and by over, through, uh, throughout to pierce through and to travel and to walk through. Glory to God. As the oil comes upon us this morning, every opposition, every limitation you are coming up against in 2023, you are going through them in the name of Jesus. David says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the reason he could walk through the valley of the shadow is because he was anointed with fresh oil. Because he was anointed, he could go through. Woo. Everybody may be suffering from breakdown this year, but I am breaking through glory to God. That's what that word means. So this phrase was... Uh, we saw it in the New Testament 41 times, 41 times, but time won't allow me to go through all of that. But I'm just going to uh, pick one of those times that it appeared in Acts chapter 12, verse 10. Acts chapter 12, verse 10, that word, that komai, uh, is the same word used in Acts chapter 12, verse 10. Peter's rescue. Anybody remember when Peter was in prison? They were about to kill him after they, they, I think they killed Stephen. And then they wanted to kill, you know, because the church wasn't praying like they should pray. Uh, and then uh, Herod uh, took uh, Peter as well. Uh, and the church was like, no, 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 no. You are not killing the rock. Amen. So the church started to pray. Glory to God. That's Acts chapter 12, verse 10. This was the rescue of Peter. When they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them, hallelujah, which opened to them of his own accord. Was anybody at the 10 a.m. prayers this morning? Uh, we were praying about lift up your head, oh, you get right. Uh, uh, gates are, uh, get ready, because as the anointing comes upon you, gates are bound to be opened of their own accord, glory to God. So it says, uh, as, they, as he was going, the angel of the Lord, of course, tapped Peter in the prison, and he thought he was in a trance, and then he began to experience that supernatural deliverance. I decree over you and your family this year, there shall be supernatural deliverance in the name of Jesus. Some of you, things that will be happening in your life will be like, somebody wake me up, am I dreaming? There's going to be supernatural manifestations. There shall be supernatural occurrences. Come on. Your life is going to be characterized by the supernatural. Woo, hallelujah. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed unto, um, from him. That's the same word, that word, that comma, went about, went through, is the same word there that was used. 
Because the same phrase occurred after Jesus was anointed in Acts 10, 38. You remember how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth as a result of that? Who went about? Who went about? You can't have the anointing on, of God on you and be stagnant. On that job, they may not like you as long as the anointing is upon you. Nobody can stop you. As long as the anointing is upon you, you cannot be limited. As long as the anointing is upon you, you're going to break through. You're going to go through. They may lock you in a prison. If, if, if an angel has to come into that prison to get you out, he's going to come in there to get you out. Why? Because the anointing is upon your life. Peter was one of the people in the upper room. In fact, he was the main guy that started to, to preach. First gospel that was preached after Jesus was resurrected. And the Bible says 3,000 people became saved. So that's the same word that, come, that was used when Peter was rescued. He went through. He, he, he could not be hindered by any uh, gate that human put in place uh, to stop him from being delivered. So that word, because it came as a result of the anointing, let, let's try and look at that phrase a couple of times. Does anybody remember Pastor Paul's testimony when he was uh, rescued last year? Uh, you remember that accident? The car was written off, and he came out of the car on scratch. The car was barely, I mean, if, if you get there and they tell you that, oh, this car, someone was inside, you almost would doubt the fact that who was in the car didn't die. That's what the anointing can do. You will have supernatural escape as a result of the anointing upon your life. Glory to God. I decree and declare as the oil is coming upon us this day, no accident, no incident whatsoever it is that the enemy has cooked up to take anyone's life this year. We nullify them by the power of the anointing this morning in the name of Jesus. There shall be testimonies of supernatural escape. Whether you are in the air or in, on, the, uh, on the sea, wherever you are, get ready to experience the deliverance that the anointing guarantees. That's why they couldn't kill Jesus. <laughs> you remember when they were about to throw him down the cliff? The guy just escaped through them because God anointed him. And, and until his time to die came, he could not die. That's what the anointing can do. We also see that word in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. 12 verse 10, how Peter experienced supernatural opening of doors. They came or they came onto the iron gate that leaded onto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Come on, get ready for sweatless victories this year. You might be thinking, who's going to open this door for me? But I'm praying that as you get to those doors, you realize they have already been opened for you. Glory to God. And all you need to do is to have the courage to walk through them. It doesn't matter the opposition that are coming against God's people this year. As this oil comes upon our head... Those oppositions and limitations shall begin to give way of their own accord in the name of Jesus Christ. Here is how the Bible puts it in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 17. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So that Greek word again, anointed, let, let's do a little bit of work on that one, and then we will pray afterwards. Let, let's do a bit of work on that word, creo, creo, anointed. Luke 4, 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. All our students, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Woo, hallelujah. The spirit of understanding. I'm going to show you in, uh, in Isaiah 11 what, what happens 
to an individual that the spirit of the Lord is upon. Notice we said the oil is a medium through which the, oil, the anointing flows or the spirit flows. We saw when David was anointed, the spirit of God came upon him. So also for us as we are anointed today, we can expect the spirit of the Lord to come upon us. So when the spirit of God comes upon a man, what happens is the question. So let's look at the manifestation of the spirit of God. When it comes upon an individual, look with me, please. Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2, Isaiah 11. Let's again see uh, what uh, the prophet prophesied concerning the anointing that was coming upon Jesus. Let's see what the prophet Isaiah said concerning that anointing that will come upon him. He said, there shall come forth a rod, a rod in the New King James, uh, that rod is capital R. That rod there is talking about Jesus. Rod out of the stem of Jesse. Jesus is the uh, son of David. David was the son of who? Jesse. So the Bible here is prophesying about the Messiah. And a branch shall grow out of his root. Then verse 2 now. Let's see what would happen when the spirit of the Lord is upon him. And the spirit, again in the, in the New King James, I believe that spirit is in capital. If you have a New King James, it's in capital. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Let's see then, what are the manifestations of this spirit now? It says the spirit of wisdom and understanding. As the anointing comes upon you, what can I expect, pastor? Expect the spirit of wisdom. To come upon you like it came upon Jesus, whom the Spirit of the Lord rested upon. He said, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, and the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. From today's anointing service, get ready and you can expect for the Spirit of wisdom, practical wisdom of God, to express itself through your life. Decisions that you have made in the past that you're like, when did I make this kind of decision? My goodness, how did I end up with this kind of relationship? How did I end up investing into that business? What was I thinking about? How did I end up uh, downloading that app onto my phone? Uh, whatever it is that you, whatever decision you may, you may have made in the past, when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, Wisdom is knowing what to do and always doing the right thing. Come on, as this anointing comes upon our head, days of making wrong and foolish decisions are over in the name of Jesus. Whatever loss you may have experienced in your life are decreed by the wisdom of God. There is anointing of restoration in this room in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says the spirit of wisdom will, will be upon him. So wisdom is knowing what to do and actually doing the right thing. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom enabled Jesus to always know what to do. The, 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 the Pharisees, the Sadducees, whenever they approach him and ask him funny questions, they couldn't box Jesus in. He always know what to do. Come and say this out with me. I always know what to do because I have the spirit of wisdom. Here is what John chapter 6, John chapter 6 verse 6 says. But this is said to him to test him for he himself knew what he would do. This was when they were about to feed the multitude in one of the accounts. And they were asking Jesus, or he was asking Philip, uh, where can we buy bread from? And, and, and just testing them. But Jesus knew they're going to need a miracle. They needed a miracle. So Jesus was testing them. So Jesus knew that in order to feed this multitude, we're going to have to give thanks. We're going to have to not murmur because we can't send them away. The Bible says Jesus knew what to do. Hallelujah. You cannot have the anointing on you and be stuck. Everybody may be stuck. But because the spirit of wisdom is at work in me, I know what to do at every point of my life. It takes the wisdom of God to advance in times we are living in. 
businessmen, business women, those in, in, in career, uh, those of us that are into investment, all of that. Come on, you're going to need the wisdom of God telling you when to pull your money out and to leave your money in there. There might be all kind of news going on, but if you have the wisdom of God in you, come on, you won't be making the wrong decision. That's what the anointing does. He gives you the capacity to know what to do and doing the right thing. And then it says the spirit of understanding. Understanding here is, is uh, uh, the, uh, as the oil comes on you, you can expect understanding to rest upon you. Understanding of concepts and ideas. The ability to grasp complex information and maybe all kind of information you've never been introduced to. Uh, uh, the spirit of understanding means you just, they just uh, introduce you to something and you're able to grasp it. That's what this anointing of understanding can do. The ability to understand what nobody in your generation has never been able to figure out. That's what this understanding does. To realize that I'm different. I've got the capacity of God in me to understand the times and seasons. Here is what Paul prayed for the Ephesians church. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, Paul had to pray this understanding upon the Ephesians church. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh, verse 18, I believe verse 18, he said, the eyes, the eyes of your word, understanding, being enlightened, that you may know. Come on, say, I know. Hallelujah. Come on, times we are living in right now, there may be all kind of news everywhere, but we're going to be like the sons of Issachar. The Bible says they add understanding of times and seasons. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 3. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 3, that's what this anointing does. He gives you the capacity to understand stuff. Oh, our men in this church, our women in this church, come on, you have the anointing to understand your spouse. <laughs> so stop declaring, oh, I don't understand. I don't know. No, no, no. As the oil comes upon you, there's going to be supernatural capacity to realize when she's tapping her feet. I understand what she means. Glory to God. When she's going up and down in the house, I, I, I understand what she means. When he comes back from work and he goes straight to his bedroom, I understand exactly what it means. That's what the anointing can do. You're able to understand your children. So that our children don't become, uh, they don't go around looking for stuff that is right under their roof. Come on, that's the anointing to realize when my child comes back from school and they're giving me all this one-line answer, fine, okay, good. And then the spirit of the Lord just quickens you. Come on, there's something wrong there. Uh, don't, don't just give up on that, ask more questions. That's what the understanding can do in the life of a believer. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 3. He says, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had what? Understanding. Understanding. Uh, is that First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 3? Uh, you can help me find it, praise the Lord. He says, they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heirs uh, 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 of them were 200 uh, and all their brethren were at their commandment. We're talking about understanding of God's word like never before. It takes the understanding of God's word to advance. If you're going to advance and break territories and do the impossible, come on, you're going to understand who you are in Christ. As you read God's word this year, I decree and declare that our level of understanding is going to another level. Can you say amen? Those days of reading the word and yawning and wondering and asking questions what is going on. Come on, because you have the anointing of understanding upon you. Those informations in Chronicles, in, 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 in Kings and all of those scriptures now are making sense to you. Because I have the anointing of understanding practically working in my life. As the oil comes on you, 
you can expect the spirit of counsel. We're still in that Isaiah chapter 11. The spirit of counsel to come upon you or counsel. Never to be confused or stagnant again in your life. John 14 verse 26, but the counselor, you see that? But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Come on, the spirit of counsel, you're able to be counseled by the Holy Spirit. We have him as our counselor. So there is no room for depression. The reason why people are depressed is because they are so overwhelmed. They don't know what to do. They don't get the right, right advice. They don't get the right counsel. Uh, in fact, oftentimes, they would even ask them to go see a counselor. But when this anointing comes upon you, things that don't make sense all of a sudden, it's going to be the deep calling to deep. It's going to be spiritual things. The Holy Spirit will start to counsel you. This is the step to take. These are the people to avoid. These are the kind of food to eat. Did you know that food can even contribute to how you feel? I didn't know that until some people that were dealing with some things telling me that there, there are certain gluten-free food are good for them because they don't release certain hormones or whatever they release. And, and if you don't understand all of this, you keep eating uh, every, every Monday morning, you're eating maybe pounded yam before you go to work, and then you're wondering why you're so... <laughs> You eat <laughs> you eating rice, you eat a sandwich uh, very early. I mean, you wake up in the morning, 5 a.m., you go to the, co to the to fridge, and you're drinking a uh, 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 fizzy drink. And then you wonder why you can't join our 6 a.m. prayer. <laughs> Spirit of cancer would say to you, no, 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 don't, don't eat that late. You, you're going to struggle to wake up in the morning. <laughs> Are there any children in the room? Spirit of counsel will tell you, no, 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 don't, 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 ex, don't waste too much of your energy. You're going to need it when you get home. That's another class. I mean, we have couples night coming up this, this two weeks. It's going to be amazing. The spirit of counsel, he comes alongside you and counsel you in the right things to do and the things not to do. So, when you have the spirit of counsel, he gets rid of depression, he gets rid of frustration, he gets rid of confusion in your life. Why? Because I have the anointing of counsel at work in my life. Please declare this with me. Because I have the anointing, I have the right counsel. The enemy also understands the power of counsel. So he also will usually send people alongside you that will give you the wrong counsel. That's why you need this anointing of counsel so that when people are giving you advice, they are honestly giving you advice, but these advice are wrong counsel, and you have to have this ability of the Holy Spirit to realize, come on, this is not the counsel that I need. When my marriage is going through uh, uh, the rocks, this is not the counsel that I need. Come on, this is not the counsel that I need right now. When I'm vulnerable, I, I don't need this kind of counsel. I need the right counsel around my life. The book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 1. So three, he says, blessed is the man. Come and say, that's me. Uh, blessed is the woman. Come and say, that's me. He said, blessed is the man and woman who walks not in world. The counsel, why? Because counsel are powerful and we need the anointing of counsel upon us. That does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the sea, in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of discomfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in, this, in his law, he meditates in day and night. He shall be, verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in a season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he or she does shall prosper because they have access to the right counsel. Second Samuel. Chapter 15, verse 31, he says, Then someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, 
I pray, turn the counsel, turn the counsel. Come on under this anointing this morning. I don't know what kind of negative counsel you've been given. Every counsel of Ahitophel in your life, we turn them to foolishness right now in the name of Jesus. Every counsel telling you, leave your wife, leave your husband, and, and, and let go, give up. And you don't need to do all of that to be a Christian. Every of this negative counsel on the this anointing, we put an end to those wrong counsels. Every traditional counsel. Oh, don't, don't treat your husband with too much respect. Don't treat your wife with too much respect. All of this negative counsel on TV, uh, children now talking to their parent anyhow, and all of this wrong counsel. Oh, don't give. If you give, you're going to run short. You're going to run out. And people are broke as, as even more than Ten Commandments of, of, of Moses. That's how much people are broke because the counsel is don't give, don't sow, don't do this, don't do that, don't love anybody. Look after yourself. Get all you can, can all you get. And all of this wrong counsel is leading people in the wrong direction. The Bible says when you have the Holy Spirit on you, you have his counsel. As the oil comes upon you, you can expect the spirit of might, still in the Isaiah 11. The spirit of might to rest upon you. It takes strength to advance. Not just natural strength, but supernatural strength. You need this anointing of might, church, upon your life this year. To be able to make progress by, uh, let me say like they say, by fire or by force. <laughs> Come on, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent takes it by force. That's the anointing of might upon you. The anointing of might, when it comes upon you, it empowers you to uh, accomplish great feats for God. It, it empowers your faith and for you to believe God for anything. As the oil comes upon you, you can expect that there is a supernatural strength coming upon you to run and not grow weary, to walk and not grow faint, to take steps of faith and experience victory to victory and faith to faith and open doors to open doors and get ready not to be weary in well-doing. Glory to God to keep doing the right thing at the right time and keep taking steps of faith until you see the end of your faith. That's what the anointing of might does. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall what receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Come on, this anointing of might, it, it comes it, it's as a result of the Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes you look at some of us, uh, these guys are, 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 are this and that. No, it's the anointing of might coming upon you to be able to overcome your duvet this year. Uh, you know those times early in the morning when you're about to wake up for prayer, your duvet just develops some power and authority over you and the thing just gets warmer and all of a sudden you just, your, your, your sleep just gets cozy. When the anointing of might is upon you, you're like, hey, duvet, I've got authority over you. Whether or not I'm going all the way, glory to God. That's the anointing of mind. Coming upon you to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I think I can get some, some witness in the house this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. I come against every satanic attack of sickness and disease in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of might coming upon us as a church. There is no feeble person. Amongst us this year in the name of Jesus, we are going from strength to strength. The Bible says as they appear in Zion, they go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. This year we declare sickness and disease has no place in this church, has no place in our families, has no place in our body. Why? Because the anointing of might has come. Say that with me please. I have the anointing of might. So I have sound health. So I have sound mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's round up. Let's round up. 
As the oil comes upon you, you can expect the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. This is talking about knowing the Lord for yourself. The knowledge of the Holy One. Not based your relationship on what pastor said, but having a desire that I may know him like Paul and the power of his resurrection. When this anointing comes upon you, you will start to know God for yourself. Please say that with me. I know God for myself. You know why a lot of people become casualties in the body of Christ? They don't know God for themselves. So as this anointing comes upon us today, I'm praying that this church, you will know God for yourself. And that's what that knowledge in that scripture means, uh, to have the spirit of knowledge. And that's the prayer Paul prayed for the, 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 the Ephesians church, excuse me, in Ephesians 1.18, Ephesians 1.18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of knowledge, or excuse me, of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. As the anointing comes upon you, come on, there is a release of fresh desire in you to know him for yourself, to go on your own personal journey with God, and to, to begin to uh, uh, experience his power like you have never experience before why uh, Daniel 11 Daniel 11 32 tells us the reason why we need this anointing of knowledge he says those who do know or those who do wickedly against the covenant it shall corrupt with flattery but the people if you're gonna survive all the flattery in the end times all this lies of the enemy all of these lies about kind of diseases and sickness and everything happening Come on, you're going to need this anointing upon your life. But the people who do know their God, please say this out with me in the year 2023. I know God for myself. He said they will know their God and shall be strong and carry out great exploit. If you're going to advance like never before, you need this knowledge of God. If you're going to See God's kingdom advance through your life and your exploits in these last days for your life to be characterized by miracles, tangible miracles. You need to have this knowledge of God for yourself. No longer times to base your relationship with God on someone else's relationship. They may fall by the wayside. I'm going to keep running my race because my eyes is fixed. On Jesus. So these are things to expect as the oil comes upon us today. Conscious awareness of God's holiness and his nature. That spirit of the fear of the Lord. That's what he's talking about. The fear of the Lord has long departed from the body of Christ like he used to be. But this spirit we need the restoration of the fear of the Lord. That God is holy. The Bible says it's of a purer eyes. He will never behold iniquity. Come on, they have turned the house of the Lord to where they are buying and selling. Uh, and Jesus said, no, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So God wants this anointing upon chosen church today to bring about the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord. How can I do this and sin against God? Joseph said, uh, the things that made the people of old to experience the power of God like like never before. They couldn't even lie to one another without dying. Can you imagine that? That's how much the holiness of God was real in their midst. I'm praying as the oil comes upon us, there shall be a restoration of the fear of the Lord. Before you do those things again, there's going to be a grip of the fear of God on your heart. Before you treat them, before you abuse anyone, uh, the spirit of fear of the Lord is going to come upon you and say, no, 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 I can't not treat God's creation like that. The spirit of the fear of the Lord before I lie about my tax. Come on, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is coming upon you. Before you do things and try to cut corner in order to advance, come on, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is coming upon us. And as it comes upon us, we will see the greater glory of God. So Father, we say thank you. For all of this manifestation as a result of your spirit. Let it rest upon us 
to be able to revere and reverence God again. To be aware of how holy he is. To bow before him in adoration. So that he can be free to move in our churches again. So that we can see the goodness and the power of God like we have seen him in the past. And to say, Lord, revive your works in our times. Not to treat God like anybody else, but to give him the rightful place in our lives. It is possible by this anointing of the fear of the Lord. Please, can we rise up together as we just uh, pray and we just declare all of this. We can leave that Isaiah 11. Uh, uh, we can just have the uh, Isaiah 11 verse 2 on the screen. Please help me signal them to bring the kids out. And then we're going to get anointed. Come on, this is not religious stuff we're doing right now. Mama, mama, no, Hefredisha, Pana. There is going to be anointing of might destroying addictions in this place. For Pande, Epana, Adiesto. People that are weak in their characters. Come on, the anointing is coming upon us.